Well, welcome to Tongue Tied, our ride and tie interviews. I am so glad to have uh, on our, our episode today, Chris Lang and Kelly Pultz, and they are the uh, double winners of the East Coast uh, Regional Championships uh, just this past weekend. This is Monday. We're recording this right after it has happened. They won both the long course and the short course on the same horse. And so they, they have all kinds of accolades that we want to talk about today and, and hear of their stories. Uh, but first, because everybody's not going to know you, um, I want to hear just a little bit about each of you outside of the ride and tie world. And so Kelly, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. I started riding horses when I was eight years old and then got a green pony when I was nine. So I had a little green on green, black and blue, but that's okay. I loved every minute of it and I learned how to stay on him. And then I started training for a challenging trail half marathon. Oh, around 2015, I think. And I work in a wellness center and a member who does endurance we were talking horses and she said, you know, you'd be perfect for ride and tie. So they're always looking for partners who can ride and who can run. I was like, oh, well, that sounds kind of interesting. What, what sort of distance do they do? He said, oh, you know, it's short, like 30 miles. I said, oh, I've never ridden for 30 miles and I've certainly never ran for 30 miles. I don't know about that. So I kind of sat on it for a little bit, but I live close to the OD horse camp for the Orkney ride. And so I was familiar and I was running by the camp one day and I saw somebody come out of the woods and they had long pants on and a helmet. And I was like, that's one of those ride and tie people. Ma, ah, that does look interesting. So I went to the July riding tie weekend and I just wanted to learn about it and said, oh, well, we've got a partner for you. It's like, I get to ride too? Well, hey, and you know, you try it once and then you get hooked on it. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. So Chris, tell us a little bit about you and about how you got into all of this crazy stuff. Sure. Um, so I, I did not grow up riding. Um, in fact, I just learned how to ride a horse a couple years ago when my friend Dave Venable called me up and invited me to the, the World Championship Ride and Tie race that year. Um, I, have, I have a background doing a lot of running, cycling, triathlon, um, but, but not riding a horse. And to be honest with you, I didn't know what Ride and Tie was. And... I guarantee you I was not at the top of Dave's list when he started calling people. Um, he was looking for a partner for his wife. Dave, Dave already had a partner. Um, and I said yes. And I, I, went, I went to their farm and, and rode. Their horse's name is Ray. And I rode Ray in the ring and learned some basic, you know, how to, how to stay in the saddle, how to Hold, like ho, stop the horse, and how to walk. We did a little bit of trotting in the ring. And then we went out to the, this field that they have on their, on their property and said, let's, you know, Dave was with me on another horse and said, let's try cantering. And he brought Ray up to a canter. And of course, I'm, I'm new at this. I'm clearly, you know, not confident. I'm sure Ray knew this and was very confused. And I was bouncing around and of course I tried to bring you know I pulled back on the reins and started saying ho but at the same time I was squeezing with my legs trying to stay on the horse but of course that means go and so Ray was bouncing his head and he was confused and finally brought him down and decided you know trotting is fine no need to canter and we um that was my my practice before the race and we did the race and so it was a, a trial by fire and and just like Kelly said, once once you do it, you get hooked, and, and I I haven't stopped since. Very good. And we should note that that very first race, with your very limited horse riding experience, you still won the world championship in that first race. And we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, but that's 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 quite something. You, you just kind of followed the world championship over the East Coast, even though now you're a very experienced uh, uh, riding tire. You've done it lots, I know. Um. 
Well, either or, or both of you can answer this question. Both of you talked about finding partners. Uh, and, and Kelly, I love the story, but you just show up to learn about it and they throw you on. Let's let's go now. I, I've, I've heard that happen a number of times. How did you find each other? Because I think this is the first time you two have partnered in a race, correct? It is. Yes. Um, Rhonda yes, reached out and just asked if I would be willing to partner with Chris. And I'd seen him at the Ride and Ties. He was incredibly fast. And Ray was an awesome horse. So I was like, oh, wow, that would be great. I, I guess I should say that uh, I was a competitor in that same, both of those races you just were in, and all of the rest of us kind of knew up front that even at the start, it was your race to lose because we knew how strong runners you guys are and, and what a great horse Ray is. And so unless you, Ray, uh, got a stone bruise or something or y'all happened to get off course, we were all thinking it, it's their race to lose, and, and you, didn't, you, you didn't disappoint. Well, so your brand-new partners – uh, uh, how much did you talk about strategy ahead of time? And do you have any strategic secrets that you might be willing to share with a, a, a wider audience? Well, um, we, we did talk a little bit of strategy, not, not, not a lot. Um, one of the things with Ride and Tie is figuring out how long between the exchanges that you want to go. Um, and so, uh, we agreed on on three minutes, and we could adjust it short or too long. We we could change that up, um, and that that seemed to work pretty well. Um, we 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 modified it a little bit along the way. You know, some of the some of the terrain had a lot of rocks, so the runner can move a little bit faster than the horse type of deal. But for the most part, we just kept falling in, you know, three minutes worked fine. And we thought, you know, no need to change it if it's working. Yeah. Any, uh, any secrets, Kayla, you got, you want to share with us? Um, yeah, we really, it seemed to go pretty well equally with our exchanges and things really worked out well. Um, Chris rode Ray right into the vet check. So I vetted him through. And then I could catch him in a couple of miles. He wasn't too far. He, he got a good lead, but we could still catch him. Doing the switching every three minutes, did one of you typically tie and one of you typically, and then do a, a, a flying tie, or did you typically tie always? Uh, great point, Courtney. Um, most of the time it worked out where one of us would tie and then the next ex exchange we would do a flying tie mm -hmm. but that didn't always work out so if if the rider caught up with the runner too quickly we'd say you know just go another two or three minutes and time up and then we would kind of fall back into that leapfrog and then it just seemed to work out we we make our way back to the one tie you know one flying tie type of rotation that that worked out well good good well, let's talk a little bit now about the first day. That was the long course, and it was 32 miles. And uh, uh, let's start with the course. Uh, it, it's Kelly's kind of home turf, our home court. Uh, but the, that Old Dominion course is called the Beast of the East. That's its nickname. Uh, how did you guys find it? Is that is that an accurate nickname? It is. And I always say that, you know, nobody runs up the gas line. It's just too steep and too rocky. But wow, Ray could trot up it. I was so incredibly impressed. And of course, we had phenomenal weather where it was a nice cool breeze on top, wasn't humid, and he just, he stayed trotting. So I didn't always run, but he kept moving up the mountain on the first day. Very impressive. Chris, was that your first, that wasn't your first time there, was it? Uh, no. Um... But that's the first time I've done, I guess, the long course, which okay. included the second yeah. loop. So I did not know the second loop. Gotcha, gotcha. So just uh, maybe, Kelly, you'd be the best one since it's just kind of your course. Just just briefly give us an overview of what that course was like. It is rocky, mm -hmm. for sure. Very rocky. Um, total elevation gain was around 5,000. So we head out about five miles relatively flat trail then we head up the mountain it is a long climb up the mountain lots of rock you just have to take it slow and get up there 
And then there's a long, about two and a half mile ridge that seems to go on forever. It is also very rocky. So you're thinking, oh, we're on top of the mountain. We can make up some lost time now. But you hit all those rocks and you're still a little bit slower. Then you get two miles down the mountain on a road. So again, just, just trotting because of the downhill. And going into the vet check and then the second loop's a little rocky and most people didn't enjoy the second loop quite as much, even though it wasn't as hilly. It just, it just seemed to drag on a little bit. And then the third loop is, is pretty short. It goes six or seven miles back to camp, right? Right. You know, you're going home. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Well, you mentioned the vet check a little while ago. Lots of times, I think riding ties are won or lost in the vet check. Uh, and, and sometimes that's because you can't get the horse to vet through and you, you're trying to get a heart rate down or you have some problem you're working with. Or sometimes it's you get a, a runner or a rider that, that lollygags maybe a little too long in the vet check. Uh, as you mentioned, this course had two mid-race vet checks. And, and most ride and tie championship courses, we try to do that because you get that little extra strategy that, that, that goes on there. Um, you mentioned a little bit what strategies did you use for your vet checks and then how did they go? So I went well. Um, when the first time we went in, all of the 55 mile horses were in there. So it was a very busy vet check. And the vets were really good to recognize that we're riding tie. So we're still tacked up. And they're saying, hey, bring that riding tie person down here and get them down here. And they took us through pretty quickly. But you and the other teams were right there. Yeah. You were, <laughs> we were still in the vet check as you came in. So we knew you were very close. <laughs> um, and, but but you, uh, Chris, all the vet checks went fine, right? Ray didn't have any problems? Uh, correct. Um, so our strategy was for, for me to ride right in and I handed them off to, um, we had a crew for this race. So I was able to hand him off to a crew person, grab another water bottle and take off running. And I'd like to add Ray, Ray is a super talented horse. He pulses down within no time. A lot of time the vets will ask us, did you even push this horse or did you, did you just walk in the entire time? So I'm glad to hear, you know, Kelly handled the, the vet out, you know, process, the vet check process. So I'm glad to hear that that went fine. And she did catch me rather quickly. So I wasn't out there running, you know, by myself for, for miles. So, so you were, it sounds like you, you handed the horse off, grabbed water ball, and you were gone. So you had a, a 15, 20 seconds you were in or, or, or longer than that? That's right. Yeah, very good. There you go. I think that's, that, that's something Dave Venable taught me. I know Dave taught you that as well. So a good, good job. Well, either one of you, any stories or experiences that happened during the long course along the way you want to tell us about? We did have an issue after the second vet check. We left the second vet check and then there's a gate that then you cross over the road. Unfortunately, that gate was padlocked shut. We couldn't go across the road. And we're getting panicked because the gate shut. We know we have other teams coming up behind us. So I called my husband, who's a radio operator, and on the radios with the race control and said, hey, can you get somebody on the radio? We need this gate open now. But he was at the turnaround for the long course, and he did not have cell service there. So no radio contact. There was a phone number on the gate for the farm. We called that number, left a message. The gate's closed. We need out of the gate. No answer. So finally, Chris said, I'm going to keep on going down the trail. You're going to have to ride back. And fortunately, you know, Ray is such a great horse, had plenty of horse under me. And he knew this wasn't right, that this gate was closed. Mm -hmm. So we turned around and we cantered. We Blew in back into the vet check, and everybody's what's wrong? What's wrong? It's like the gate's closed, we need the gate unlocked. <laughs> so they were scurrying, calling the farm manager to get the combination to get the gate locked. And I turned Ray and we 
flew back and the whole time I was sure that you and Coda were just going to come into the vet check right behind us or Kevlar and we'd end up racing hard those last six miles and I was like oh no and we got back to the gate and still nobody there so we had to stand there and wait and wait and Ray's looking around and say, I know you want to go. I know it's not right, but we, you've got to wait. And finally, they come and they padlock, <laughs> open the gate, and we're about to go across the road. And here comes a car on the road. It stops. It's like, oh, they're going to let us go. So I start to meet Ray, and then, they, then the car starts <laughs> Going along, we say, well, we got the gate open. Now you have a car. Like, but we finally got the gate open and got through and went back down the trail. That's great. I know we were teasing y'all a little bit after the race. Chris was able to climb the gate, but horses just don't do so well climbing gates. It's a little steep for, for, for one of our horses to jump as well. So, yeah, what a great story. Yes. What, what a great uh, way you know y'all figured it out, though. Got it, got it done. That's good. Anything else about the long course uh, or, or, or that day? Either one of you want to tell us? I'd maybe add a little bit about the, the trail. It had poured rain the night before. And so in addition to the rocks, it was, it was very muddy. And um, uh, when, when you also have to run, you tend to really not want to get your feet wet, or at least I do. And so I do my best to, you know, try to go around the puddles that I can and, and tiptoe through the mud. And it happened to me twice, actually, trying to tiptoe through the mud where I took a couple of extra steps and realized I had lost the shoe because it got stuck in the mud and my foot came right out. <laughs> That's great. Yep. And once again, the beast of the East doesn't disappoint. So <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, uh, you had less than 24 hours to recover uh, until you did another race, the short course. Uh, what did you do for yourselves to recover, and how did you make sure that Ray recovered? Ray did a great job. No. He, I don't. He was really we walked him around, but he he seemed like you know he didn't even go out the day before. So and me ate and then went to bed early, and you get up and you try not to think about how sore you are. <laughs> How about you, Chris? Anything in particular you do to recover? Eat, drink, and sleep. All right. All right. Well, let's move on to the next day. So you've, you've got a championship under your belt. You're the, you're the long course champions, uh, but that's obviously not good enough for the two of you. And so we take off again the next day. Uh, how was the, the course, both the, the uh, um, actual the, the distance and, and the, the direction all we went on the course or the um, – the, the, um, pattern of the course. I, I can't get the right word, the trail, the, 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 the directions on the course. How is that different? And were there other, were there other course differences from day two, uh, on day two, from day one? It was definitely nice not to have to worry about that second loop. It's, mm -hmm. It seems so much shorter than to think we just have to go up the mountain, then we've got that downhill stretch, and we're back home. So, it was really nice not having that second loop. Um, the 55 milers had gone out before us and it seemed like the second day they were moving faster than they did when we did the long course. So we were further away from horses. Ray couldn't sense them. He wasn't quite as motivated at the start until we caught up with them later on in the course. And then we just took it a pretty easy going up the mountain on the second day. We did a lot of walking and actually Dave caught up to us at the gas line. He came up right behind us like, uh oh. And then we we took off a little bit more. Good, good. And actually one of the things you mentioned about the 55 milers that we should mention, this was not only the Ride and Tie East Coast Championship, uh, regional championship, but it also was the AERC national championships. And so we were running with 55s on Thursday and Friday. And then on Saturday, there was the potential to have a hundred mile ride in tie, but nobody took a ride to up on that. But there were a hundred mile, uh, uh, the, the, the AERC national hundred mile championship was on, on Saturday as well. And so we were sharing the, 
the course. It was a wonderful thing to do that with them. Well, well you mentioned a little bit, so maybe you may already answer that question, but you, you walked a little bit more up the hills and, and Ray was had a little bit of maybe trouble getting motivated a little bit. Any other changes in strategy or execution on the second day from the first? I'd okay, say we, I mean, on the way, sorry, Chris, on the way back, the uh, 25 mile horses and the Epithon horses were heading back to base camp as well. So then Ray was very motivated. He was going very fast on the way back. And I actually missed the last tie for Chris <laughs> before we got to the turkey farm. I mean, Ray just blasted down that hill because there was a group of four horses in front of him and he was just locked in on those horses. And I missed that last tie for Chris. And I was like, oh no, I, I pulled Ray back to a walk during the road and I told Ray, I was like, you know, those other horses, they only have one human to take care of. You have two humans you have to take care of. So we need to wait for Chris and you let them go. Oh, that's great. I do, I do appreciate that. <laughs> um, any other stories? Two was, oh, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to add day two was, um, I found it to be more relaxing and enjoyable. We we did take it a little bit more easy, especially on on going up the hill. Um, we didn't push Ray up the hill, and just just relax a little bit more. Um, and had both days were both days were a blast. But but day one was definitely race on mode, and day two was was a little bit easier than that. Sounds good. Well, well, kind of moving a couple of final questions. Uh, I Chris, in just your two years of competing in Ride High, you have, have racked up quite a resume. You are a world champion uh, from the one a couple of years ago, and now you're an East Coast, uh, uh, one of your East Coast Equathon champion, I believe. Were you not at the last one in 2020? Did you did you finish first in that? I know uh, you outraced yes. the horse. Was that to win it? That was the short course. Okay, okay. But still, you're an East Coast Equathon champion. Uh, a man, man, year in points champion last year, and now a double East Coast champion. Did I miss any other major accomplishments? <laughs> that, that that sounds about right. <laughs> All right. Well, what about other goals that you may have for for riding time? What, what what else would you like to do in in riding time? Um, I'd like to keep going. Uh, you know, like like I said before, I've. Since my first race, I've, I've, I've really been hooked on this, and I've been fortunate with um, Dave and, and Rhonda Vindable showing me the ropes and, and letting me ride the horses. And I, um, I recently um, – I, I own a horse now, uh, so mm -hmm. I, I purchased a horse. Um, his name is Blue, um, and I've been, I've been training him, doing trail rides. I'm, I'm excited – I purchased a truck, waiting on that to get delivered. I'm searching for a trailer. And, you know, in the not-so-distant future, I hope to buy some property so I can um, keep my horses at home and take care of them. And I say horses because Blue's going to need a partner or a buddy, so maybe there's another horse in the future, um, near future for me. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm hooked. Apparently, I, I have a horse gene that I was, you know, didn't know about, and it's, it's just now um, coming out. I just think that is one. When you fail, you fail hard. Two years ago, you'd never ridden a horse, and now you own one. You've got you got the truck. You're headed for the trailer and the property, the whole nine yards. Tell you, the, my life goals have have really taken a drastic turn <laughs> over the last few years. <clears throat> so, Kelly, you're on the other end. You've been doing this since you were little, little. Uh, but uh, you're now a double East Coast champion. What other uh, goals do you have, maybe for riding time? Um, I'm looking for a horse that would do well with the ride and tie as well. So trying to find a horse partner. All right. <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, encourage uh, folks that maybe have heard about this sport but have never tried it uh, and they're a little reluctant or maybe even a little bit uh, uh, fearful. What advice or, or encouragement would, would you guys give them? Chris, we'll start with you. Give it a whirl. Um, Everybody that I've talked to, they they try it, they love it, and I, I um, we often have these these ride and tie events in conjunction with the the endurance rides, and so a lot of the endurance riders they they see us out there and they always comment that we're we're always smiling, 
and, and they always say, oh, I want to try riding ties someday, but, and there's always a but, and whatever that but is, I'd say, don't worry about it. Just go for it. There's, there's short distances. You can go whatever pace you want. And if you're worried about the horse, the horses, they learn very quickly, very quickly. You know, I've, I've, I've been on some, some, some new horses to ride and tie. And after a few exchanges, it's, it's repetition. They, they learn and you'll, you'll, you know, reach the point where you're on the horse and the horse you're trotting down the trail, they will stop and walk to a tree with, with no input from you. They, they, yeah. they learn, they know the drill. And when you tie them to that tree, they will turn around and look for the runner to come up behind them. Mm -hmm. yep. How about you, Kelly, advice or encouragement? You, you go ahead and give it a try. And you, really anybody can do it. You don't have to be a great runner. You don't have to be a superb rider. It really can match anybody's ability. And it's not nearly as crazy as it sounds. <laughs> That's great. Well, anything else either one of you want to say before we sign off? I will. I would like to add just a, a thank you to, you know, the, the ride managers that, that make the effort, the support staff, the volunteers, the vet staff, the crew. Um, and then to, you know, a lot of these riding type, you know, we, we, we tag along with the, the endurance events, so those organizations, um, and it works out great. We use the same course, we use the same facilities, venue, works under, um, and so I know there's a lot of work that goes into this, so a big thanks to that, um, and a big thanks to you know, Dave and Rhonda for you know, bringing me into this and, and letting me use their horse. It's, it's really changed my life. <laughs> Any last words, Kelly? Um, and just to thank everybody because it is does take a lot of work to put on these events and lots of volunteer hours. And it's just phenomenal that all the work they put into the prep. Indeed. And, and a huge thanks to two of you for your, uh, to let me do this with you today, but also a, a gigantic congratulations. Uh, you were against some of the elite of the elite uh, teams uh, in the country and and two days in a row you came back down with the with the win and that's impressive and I'm 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 proud of you I uh, wouldn't have minded if you got lost and and uh, or, or something one of those days but it didn't happen that's okay that's the only way I was going to catch you though but I am proud of you and thankful for you and 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 congratulations to both of you and thanks for being on this today thanks Courtney yeah. Kelly's a Kelly's a great partner all right so is Chris. All right. Well, those are great final words. And thanks so much. And we will sign off.